<laughs> so, um, Gary's lost his call a little bit here and he's, calm down Gary. And he's actually, he's jumping around the room again. You need to calm down Gary, but that's good because he's going to allow us to analyse a little bit of projectile motion, a parabola, or I should say, a garabola. So I'm going to take this onto the computer now and show you with a bit of video analysis software called Tracker, where I'm going to be able to actually analyse his motion through the air and hopefully show that as he's moving through the air, the only force on him is gravity. So this is the Tracker system here, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to show you how easy it is to use. Certainly once you've done it a few times, it is pretty easy. Um, the first thing uh, to say is just that it's an open source software and you can um, download it for free if you just search tracker physics um, analysis something like that I'm sure you will find it uh, whatever video you're interested in just import that straight into tracker as I'm doing there I've showed you a couple of ways to do video analysis before crude video analysis is one video of mine and also on the phone um, and this is going to have a few advantages of over both of those. Um, as soon as a video is in, then you're essentially trying to find this section of the video that you're interested. I'm going. Now the next thing I need to do is tell the video uh, what a meter is. Okay, so I can add a calibration stick, and it's usual just to put something in your video that you know the length of. I know the length of that there is one meter. Conveniently with the two markers there from my previous experiment I was obviously doing. And I I know this is in SI units, so I know now that is one meter. Okay, it doesn't have meters on it, but I know it's one meter. Then I'm gonna add a track. And I'm just gonna do I'm gonna model Gary as a point mass. What I'm doing is I'm just holding down shift and when you hold down shift you get that little crosshair that I've got there. This is the kind of lengthy bit. And I'm happy with that. That's the two throws, so I didn't need all the video that I'd selected there, but I'm happy with that. Um, so we can see now the graphs are automatically built for us. I can actually add a mass for what Gary is. He's probably not much more than 150 grams, maybe, maybe 200 grams. And that's going to be in kilograms. And that will allow me to work in... Um, energy and things like that and forces but if I just want speed distance um, acceleration then the mass doesn't matter so I'm not too worried about that uh, I can also export this table okay and show all the different things in the table as well but I'm not going to do that you can actually just copy all that data like so and you can uh, you can take that out into Excel and analyze it in the way that you're used to on Excel. But it does just show you graphs without the need to do that. So I'm going to just use that there. Um, I'm interested in this little portion here. Uh, this is the first throw and this is the second throw up here. And the minute it's showing X dimension against time. So it's displacement against time, it's distance time graph. Um, I can tell it where to treat as zero by using these things here, these axes. And also I can tell it which direction to be positive. So I'm happy that at the minute I'm going to throw it in a negative direction and then Tommy's going to throw it back to me in a positive direction, but I could spin it round. A shift allows me to make it straight. And now you can see it's a positive throw from me and a negative throw from Tommy. But it doesn't actually matter at all uh, which way you want to do this, just as long as you know you can do that, because it might matter at some point. Um, so 
let's carry on with understanding what these graphs are showing. So that's the x position, and what you'll see is it goes pretty straight line um, on each throw, which means as we're modeling projectiles, what we say is that the, the velocity in the x dimension is constant. So we don't talk about when, we do, when we're doing projectile motion, we don't talk about objects slowing down due to air resistance, we just say ignore air resistance. So that's a good little demonstration straight away. Now if I change the um, value on the y-axis to actually the y position component, you can see that actually my throw was less high than Tommy's throw. He's gone through much larger change in displacement in the y dimension. And actually if you were to play that video again, you could see exactly that. It runs through the, the points as you do that. So this is the Y position, a lower throw from me, and a much higher throw from Tommy. Okay, so that's pretty useful straight away, isn't it? Then we can do some more analysis. We can talk about the, the velocity in the X component. Okay, this is the next thing, and you can see for the duration of the throw, yes, it's slowed down ever so slightly. Yes, it's slowed down ever so slightly, but pretty much a constant velocity in the x dimension. In the y dimension, this is the interesting part, you get these um, linear accelerations for the first throw here and the second throw there in the y dimension. So that is the acceleration due to gravity. The slope of that line is the acceleration due to gravity. Throughout the entire time of that projectile, the only acceleration is g. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. This, if you were to do a line of best fit through this, this is your classic sawtooth graph here. Now you can also, and it does start to get a little bit less um, clear the trend when you do this, but you can also use acceleration in the x component. Acceleration in x, pretty much zero apart from the points at which we throw, and I'll show you where they are again. Apart from the actual points where we throw, or indeed where we catch the gorilla as well. Aside from that, acceleration is pretty much all on zero in the x dimension. Acceleration in the y dimension, okay, during those throws will be around minus 10. Yeah, absolutely. Can you see that? So I'll replay that to show you when they are. The watch when Gary's in the air, the acceleration is down there at minus 10. Gary's in the air again, the acceleration is down there at minus 10. So there we go, and another demonstration shows what we should understand, which is acceleration due to gravity is always about minus 10. This can just show you the acceleration magnitude, so not in x or y, so we'll ignore that for now. And there's some other things, you can look at momentum. Okay, clearly momentum in one direction is opposite to the momentum in the other, that's in the x dimension. Uh, that would be very useful if we were colliding some trolleys. Momentum in the Y as well. Again, momentum is proportional to velocity, so you get the sawtooth because it's changing, his mass isn't changing, his uh, velocity is. And then you can also do his kinetic energy down there as well. So clearly, more kinetic energy in Tommy's throw than in mine. And kinetic energy is scalar, so you'd always expect that to be the case. Okay, so I think that's a pretty powerful tool, very useful way to analyze motion. It's given us a good insight into our parabolas, our projectile motion, and it's useful for just anything else. And it didn't take me very long to do today, and once you've gone through it once or twice, you can get a lot of high quality data very, very quickly and do some very high quality analysis with it. I mean, you can just use these graphs straight as screenshots if you like in your write-ups because they're, they're built for you. As long as you can annotate them, explain what it, this is showing, 
perhaps alongside some of these screenshots would be a very nice useful thing for any motion write-up that you, you would do something like that okay well thanks a lot for watching three point <laughs> gary ball <laughs> okay thanks tommy cheers, cheers. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.